Welcome to the I Went Outside Today podcast. I am one of your hosts, Chris. I'm Cheryl. And I'm Sydney. I do them things. This is episode five of our podcast. Well, as uh, the pandemic rolls on, so as the problem with um, getting things done with our podcast, we've had a few failures since last episode on getting things started. Just a couple weeks ago, we tried to head out to the Creationist Museum. We were not able to get in. Mm -hmm. We got stood up and judged. Chris and I encountered the same thing when we went on a trip at one point and visited the Creationist Museum several years ago, or two years ago, however many years ago, long, long times ago. Um, He seems to have communication issues where he doesn't really, like, understand what's going on so we showed up for our tour and he was like oh i thought it was supposed to be a different day so as much as it was frustrating i kind of wasn't surprised yeah like we had messaged him from your uh fake aliases account lindsey grube so he's expecting lindsey grube and so i'm like saturday good he's like yes and he's like what time and i'm like about one or two o'clock and he's like okay that's fine and then Friday night or Saturday morning, he messaged back, sorry, I missed you. We are getting in the car, getting ready to go on our like two hour drive. So I'm like messaged back right away. And I'm like, oh no, I meant today when I said Saturday. Yep. And then he wasn't there and we didn't get to do the tour. Yep. And he replied like an hour later after we had like hung around there for an hour and left. He was like. Are Are you still still there? (laughs) Yeah. So then we were like, well, there's got to be something close by we can do. We should just go find something else to do. So Chris had found a ghost town to go visit. But the funny thing about ghost towns in Alberta is that apparently they've all turned into tourist traps. Yep. So they're like owned buildings that people just sort of upkeep. So they're there. And so we saw like one entrance was blocked off, but we thought, Maybe it's like road work or something. So we went to the other entrance of this uh, ghost town. There was a sign lying down in a ditch, which was, I guess, supposed to tell us not to come in. But we had gotten there as soon as we had found a parking spot on Main Street. There was uh, this lady herding like six or seven cats. There was so many cats. It was so majestical. I was so excited to see them cats. (laughs) And what did she scream at us? She's like, like, get the fuck out. Yeah, (laughs) she's like, read the signs this place is closed or something along those lines Mm -hmm. there were no signs yeah the sign had been knocked over so hopefully she went back she was seemed very irate and you guys checked insta and said that like other people were there and they got to see the cats yeah there was like geotagged instagram posts of people who've been there like two days prior so we thought "Eh, it's fine and also to be fair the first sign like we were on a shitty gravel road so we just thought maybe like the road was shitty or something it wasn't like, it didn't say close. No. Mm-hmm. It didn't say go away. No. Well, and they have this huge sign next to, like, the highway that says, like, Crowleywood. You would think that if they were closed, they would have tacked a sign in front of that being, like, closed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? To to prevent people from coming off the highway and onto the terrible dirt road. Yeah. To be fair, though, it wasn't even a real ghost town. There were no ghosts. There was just 15 cats, and I was going to steal them all. Mm -hmm. So she should have yelled at us, because those cats were coming home with us if I got close. Yeah, small town fun. So, like, the town the Creationist Museum was in, they were getting kind of soured us when we were eating our lunch, saying that uh, big city folk coming into the small towns. We also did not even attempt to blend. So No, I think I was the closest one dressed to what a small town person would potentially be wearing. Yeah, I blame Chris's jacket. <laughs> that was a city jacket. It's a very nice jacket. I'm not saying it wasn't nice. I'm saying you blew our cover. I, I think the all black. I don't think there are very, very many people in a small town that wear all black. I think most people in like small town Alberta wear blue jeans. Well, those people are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, kind of a rude reception in the first town, rude reception in the ghost town of like the one resident of the ghost town, I guess. Yeah. (laughs) Minus the cats who I don't think really cared. Yeah. So then I pulled up Google Maps 
because Sydney had mentioned Drumheller, and I was like, I mean, we are pretty close to Drumheller. Do you guys just want to go to Drumheller and and go for a walk so that the day isn't a complete write off? <laughs> mm-hmm. So we drove the rest of the way to Drumheller to check out some hoodoos. We saw them hoodoos. We saw them hoodoos. And we almost slipped and died a thousand times. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. so, so slippery. So there's bentonite clay in like the soil. And when it gets wet, it makes it very slippery. So it's very hard to walk <laughs> on the hoodoos with the clay there. Yep. And it looks super dry on top. Mm-hmm. And so it's just like slightly wet under the bottom. It's like a greased up hill Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that you're just sliding down all of a sudden luckily none of us got too muddy or dirty and then after our walk of the hoodoos we went to walmart what did we need from walmart again i was looking for weights i needed linen bags there were no weights because there are no weights anywhere in our province right now and then i all the home gym equipment got bought up and started getting resold on amazon and craigslist and kijiji and then I have an addiction to yarn, so I had to go check out the yarn section of Walmart, which was also disappointing. But I did find some strap-on ankle weights that I could potentially strap on when I go for walks in the neighborhood. Oh, yeah. Did you find anything at the Wally World? At Wally World Walmart? Uh, what did I get? I needed a linen bag because I get really obsessed with things, and I just thought if I had linen bags, like cube-shaped ones, I could stack all of the linens. And I got a tiny spatula for my tiny frying pan. Um, and I almost bought a mug that looked like a smiling avocado, but it was $6 and I didn't know if it was microwave safe. You got a rolling pin. Oh, I got a rolling pin. <laughs> All the baking stuff is like sold out in Edmonton. Uh, yeah. So I have since contacted the guy because we're trying to plan another day to go out to the Creationist Museum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have not heard anything back. Amazing. So I'm wondering if he's now just ignoring the email address and if one of us is going to have to contact him either via phone or via another email address. I think um, I may have clicked on the message and then not told anyone about it because I was drunk and trying to okay. get into a different event. I think okay. it said like, hi, Lindsay, that sounds good. Maybe. Okay. I'm going to go check. I might Did be check the email? Oh, yeah. It says, yes, that will work. Thanks. Did I mark it back as unread? No, you did not. (laughs) Okay, so we will be able to go to the Creationist Museum on our next time allotted. Um, Nice. I don't know yet if I'll be joining you, but I hope to. Mm -hmm. Cheryl gets to travel far and wide for field work with her regular old day job. Mm -hmm. So she might not be able to come, but we'll still make sure you record with us. Sounds good. I'll bring a microphone with me on my excursions to the wilds of Canada. Mm-hmm. But yeah, had a much better reception in Drumheller than the first two towns we went to. <laughs> and I mean, they're a, a tourist town. The second one was a tourist town too, so they should have been nice too. Yeah. But uh, Drumheller is like one of the areas where they find the most dinosaur bones and fossils. So a lot of dinosaur tourism. It is considered the dinosaur capital of Canada. And they got them hoodoos. Mm-hmm. They do. There's also a polka stop at the Drumheller Museum entrance that I, or no, Pokemon Gym. And I dropped off my like Bulbasaur, I think, in the gym. You put a Bulbasaur in a gym? I sure did. And it was there for over a week. Nobody <laughs> else was going there. <laughs> it's fun times. He's a Not champ. even a Venusaur? Like it was a Bulbasaur? It was a Bulbasaur. Okay. We, we're going to have to have a chat later. Okay. About... And so, one of the new exciting updates is that Cheryl and I have already done our money spells, and I will uh, insert the recording of us doing them after right now. Boop. So right now, I'm just finishing up my last bit of herbs for the mojo bag. As I said before, the recipes that I found, there are so many different things that you can put in it that I kind of had to pick and choose what things go in it. So I have cumin, cinnamon, ginger, basil, sage. I also have a silver dollar. I have an amber necklace pendant. And now I have my note saying what my intentions are for this wealth mojo bag. So, uh, the 
bell that I have that I found that goes with this Mojo bag. So I've put my contents in. I need a green candle and a piece of cord. Ooh, I also have prosperity oil. <coughs> it's quite strong for my bag. So bag is closed. Uh, if I can light the candle. I take the piece of green cord and I put it around the top of my bag. Not one, the spell has begun. Not two, plenty of things to do. Not three, money will come to me. Not four, opportunity will come knocking on my door. Not five, I will thrive. Not six, my money problems will be fixed. Not seven, success will happen. Not eight, increase will be great. Not nine, all of this will be mine. So, now that I have tied all the knots, I need to drip some green wax to seal my bag. Now it says ideally it should be done under a full moon or a waxing moon. But because I'm about to go out of town, I don't know if I can wait for that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to move my cord strings out to the side. And let's see if I can drip some green wax onto the knot of my mojo bag. It's also getting on the table, but you know. So the bag has been sealed with green wax. And I'm going to put on a little bit of prosperity oil. And that's it. My spell is done. So we'll see if this helps or not. Um, for the rest of the ritual, it says I need to keep it with me at all times. So I figured I would put it in my purse. And the other thing it says is that I'm not allowed to let anyone else touch it. So I need to make sure that if I put it in my purse, I put it somewhere that... People aren't going to find it and touch it. And uh, yeah, that's the ritual. Wish me luck, guys. All right, so now I'm about to do the money spell. I have already completed step one, anoint the candles with an oil of your choice. And I decided to go with uh, Cheryl's prosperity oil that she just used on her voodoo satchel. Uh, I'm also supposed to visualize the wealth I am to receive. So I'm imagining lottery winnings, uh, dollar bills flying up to me on windy days off the street. And uh, yeah, basically just money that doesn't come from, you know, inheritance. So no one's got to die for this. It's all got to be good. I have the candles placed on an altar, which is a little tabletop shelf I have on my desk. I uh, have them nine inches apart so I also have a ruler here because you never leave it up to the judges. Uh, so step three here, I light the candles and I need to chant these words. I'm just gonna light them right now. So they are lit. Money, money, come to me in abundance three times three. May I be enriched in the best of ways, harming none on its way. This I accept, so mote it be, bring me money three times three. And I've moved the white candle an inch towards the green. And now I just need to extinguish the flames. And that's step one of the spell I need to repeat this nine times and then I assume the deal is sealed and uh, that's it for my portion I hope this one is the one that gets us all the riches imagine you listen to them and how amazing that was wow <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so we've started ours um, I know I've had some luck I've found uh, 35 cents and change so far on the ground since I started the witchcraft spell and I got a new job 
Oh, that's interesting. So you did the spell and then you got the job? Sure did. So I'm off of the COVID EI and uh, my new job, I make more money than I did with my old job. And for me, my success so far has been that although my company decided to give us a pay decrease for the non-billable hours, the billable hours have now been increased to like $5 more an hour than I was making before. And summer is busy time for me, so I'm making more money per hour. And I think my last paycheck was like $300 more than it has been over space of time. And I also found a dime. That's pretty good. Moving on up Mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So exciting update is uh, post office has finally brought the demon pendant. And I just actually just got it this morning. And all you got to do is wear it and just let that demon work its magic for you. So we know you wanted a gemstone. So I found a cursed pair of earrings and I took the gemstone out of it and I put it in there for you. Did it have to be a cursed pair of earrings? <laughs> I mean, so here's the funny thing. Cursed in what way? So cursed in the fact that that pair of earrings has not been a pair of earrings for several years. Because I lost the one of the two, like, forever ago. And then it was just sitting in my jewelry box this whole time. And I was like, you know what? She had wanted a stone. We'll just pry the stone out of the single mm-hmm. earring and glue it. I'm nervous to put it on. <laughs> I'm holding it now, so it's a little thing. It's kind of cute. Um, Isn't it pretty? It is pretty. Like, if I didn't know what this was, I would wear it, but now I'm, like, a little bit nervous. But the things I do for our podcast that is not even on the air yet. Mm -hmm. It'll be on soon. I think we talked about after five episodes. After five episodes. Number five. Jesus, take the wheel. So they also... I'm wearing it now. (laughs) The pendant. So the woman who made us the pendant, um, she also sent us a freebie, and it looks like a ruin symbol on it. And I haven't looked up what the ruin symbol is, so will we continue to discuss things? I'm going to look up what the ruin symbol is. I want that one, too. You want that one, too? Okay, I will pass that one to you right now. There you go. Guys, it looks like a rune. Should I put it on the demon pendant, or is that going to... I don't know. It's up to you. It wasn't, like, pictured in the original purchase. I wonder if it's just, like the um artist logo Mm -hmm. or a little extra she adds on it wasn't like detailed in it how funny would it be if it's like a rune that makes you poor so i just like get canceled out um you're gonna have to put it on someone and then see how much money they lose just to be sure trying to think of who i would put it on Mm. Mm -hmm. who's the richest person you know i don't know anyone that rich the richest person that i know it might be him. Don't give it to me. I already know what's hap- What's up. You already know what's up. <laughs> you know what you do? So our sister works at Safeway and hands out people change. She could just slip that in because she sees like the hockey players all the time. She could slip the runes in to she the can, change? She can, if that is like a poor person rune. She sees the hockey players? A poverty rune. She How do you sees know this? like uh, some of the. She's, she's told me. She sees like some of the Oilers shopping for the groceries from time to time i think hmm. the old mayor as well weird i'm just i don't want to say my old neighborhood my old stomping grounds on on the podcast but that's interesting <laughs> <laughs> what does the runes mean so the ruin means year harvest patience cycles time orbits right effort it's jira literally means year or harvest. Jira. J I R A. Uh G sorry, J E R A. Oh, okay. Is a rune of peace on the land and in the heart. I don't know enough about runes to like read through the rest of the sort of stuff, but the uh the psi powers mean psychological time, patience, the measurement of time. I have none of those things. Whoa, <laughs> now you do. <laughs> well now I do. Uh, the energy says good harvest orbits cycles process or progress pardon me biorhythms right effort mundane is waiting gardening farmist, farming the season and harvest and divinations reward for positive action plenty peace 
proper timing or repetition, bad timing, poverty, conflict, regression. I have no what? clue. I don't know enough about runes to be able to like. That was so many things. I don't really know how runes work either. It also governs fertility, creativity, and harmony with the land. You're going to be so creatively fertile. <laughs> not. I'm not a fan of that. I won't even have a baby in The Sims. Maybe she's just trying to be like passive aggressive. She's like, you want riches? It's like, you need to be patient. Mm-hmm. Here's this ruin to tell you how much I disapprove mm-hmm. of your current practices. Oh, shade. <laughs> well, maybe I'll just stick with the demon one in the name of science for now. Okay. Because mm-hmm. I don't want to jinx it. I want to get rich. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. One other setback I should mention that we had was um, so... The witchcraft spell had to be done nine nights in a row. And on the ninth night, you're supposed to let the candles burn down together to nothing. (laughs) And so it's the ninth night. Cheryl and I are just sitting back enjoying watching some TV. And the candles are about halfway burned down. And then the building's fire alarm goes off. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) And so I'm staring at these candles and I'm like, oh, I can't just leave them. So I had to blow them out and then start all over again for another nine days. So oh, I was casting the spell for like 18 days. Yeah. So maybe you'll get double rich. Maybe. Or hopefully at least can't, like you can't not finish a spell, you lunatic. So that's good that you did it again. Yes. Maybe that's how I got my job. Maybe. <laughs> maybe that's a good sign for Gold Hunt. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I was thinking like maybe this will help for Gold Hunt, the demon pendant. Mm-hmm. We probably should have got a pendant to uncurse us though because all of our shit gets canceled so i have actually done some research into people that will take curses off and there are a couple people in edmonton um i just need to figure out cost and whether or not it is actually something that they would be willing to do during the pandemic they need to know what kind of curse i have because i I don't don't know. know i don't know but there are there is a couple people in edmonton one of them is a shaman. He says he's a shaman, but I'm pretty sure he's just a white guy. So I'm not too sure if I should just contact him or not. So there there are people in Edmonton that do remove curses. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe. Okay. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it in time for Gold Hunt, but... Probably not. No. But you can't be doing, like, too many things at a time. We no. should just see if our spells and our demon pendants work. Right. Mm-hmm. This is our third Gold Hunt for people. Should we explain what this is? Um, Gold Hunt, it's, uh, it's a corporation started a couple of years ago, and basically they hide uh, treasure in your hometown. So far, they've done it in a few cities in Canada and more recently in the States. And they give you a list of uh, riddles and kind of like rhyming couplets, and you need to figure out where all those rhyming couplets refer to, and they kind of unlock different levels of this game. Mm-hmm. And once you make it to, like, the final level, your final rhyming couplet directs you to where the treasure is. And uh, Treasure in Past Years, I think, was, like, $100,000. Worth in, of gold, uh, like, at the day. So. Gold and silver pieces. I think this year it's just, like, 50 k Yeah. But that's still pretty sweet. And so we did this twice last year. Um, and had it not been for Gold Hunt, I don't know if I would have got to know Sydney as well. So... It's yeah, got we bonded. That. Yeah, it's got that going for it. Yeah, um, so, and I quit smoking. So it's exciting to do this again. There's a lot of disgruntled people online right now. And oh, yeah. The amount of people that are, like, upset that they're like, this is a scam, blah, 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 blah. But it's a, it's a test of intelligence. And I don't know if those people are just, like, offended they, they thought they were going to win and then they didn't win and then they lost their minds or... well i mean it's a it is intelligence but it's a tiny bit of luck too yeah, because it is like too. what if that's just not your stomping grounds mm-hmm. right like it is a pretty big ish city we so far the practice riddles that they've sent we've each solved one chris yeah. sydney and i we've each solved one so that's probably a good sign now I have my demon pendant. Yeah. Yep. Let's go, little guy. I've got the witchcraft spell. Mm-hmm. My mojo bag is on my night table. Yep. We're unstoppable. We just need to, because like our, should I mention my mom is joining us? Sure. Yeah. So our mom will be uh, 
minus Sydney's mom will be joining us. We need to like figure out something for her too. Or will she be our control group? Control group. Control well, group? she's also cursed. <laughs> Which she told me to stop saying on the podcast, but nope. She's cursed. <laughs> it's a family curse. Aww. So she can't be a control group. Well, mm. what... what do you think? Science? Science. I mean, I, I don't believe in curses to begin with. I'll be 100% <laughs> honest. I made the mojo bag and I've been trying to respect the rules, but because I don't even believe in like the magic behind it, it's very hard for me to respect the rules that are like, because it was like, afterwards i like googled it and it was like you need to treat it like a pet you need to feed it once a week you need to talk to it you need to like take it everywhere with you and i've been just not very good at remembering to do that so. you feed pets usually more than once a week yeah it says <laughs> once a week online so i've been dousing it in prosperity oil once a week it smells nice so i'm okay with it but, well that's yeah. good feed your pets every day people <laughs> listeners so one of the things we're going to do is um, set Sydney up on a virtual speed dating event since everything is going online and no longer in person. Uh, and joining her is our friend Anna, who is our very first guest on the podcast. So say hi, Anna. Oh, hey, that's special. That's awesome. We don't have any trophy <laughs> for it or anything yet, but one day one as a pin or a sticker to be created in my honor <laughs> <laughs> we can definitely do that so the first two speed dating virtual events were canceled or postponed and then the third Direction one three the three. first three yes <laughs> yeah. yeah we got canceled 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 and then yeah. uh friday night uh was supposed to be the big day that it was going to happen Mm-hmm. And we got all dressed up. Yeah, we did hair and makeup and everything, which in the time of COVID is crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because it was supposed to be a video chat. Yep, it was. Yep. And uh, I guess you guys, were, like, they ran into technical difficulties? Well, I feel like there might be some bullshit there. So I got in, like, I logged into the room and I was waiting, and there was, like, six girls and just one guy. And then the organizer was like, oh, there's supposed to be a few more guys logging in, but we could have had some no-shows, so just bear with us, right? I was late. And then, yeah. (laughs) So the whole story was, like, pretty crazy. From my perspective, because I got into the room, um, it was a little hard to set up, but I did it. Um, Like, first I was just playing around with the audio and stuff, but my type A personality, I logged in early. Um, So I got in, um, but it sounds like lots of people were having issues. And then it was so weird because then they... They're like, okay, we're going to try the event, and if you don't have a match, you're just going to wait that round out. And I was like, oh, okay. So the event, in theory, kind of starts, but it's like, so there's no match for you. And you're like, okay. And then seven minutes later, the event, and the next notice I got was just like, oh, the event's over. What? So- yeah, that's the, the notice I got. Mm-hmm. So you only ever saw one guy on the screen? And uh, on the screen, exactly. Hmm. Um and um didn't get to talk to him either like just saw him he was in the waiting room in the beginning of the thing started but like it's they stopped the event at eight ten, so they gave people exactly 10 minutes to log in and figure it out whoa that's not enough time and it sucks <sighs> like my well i was a little baby bit late but i think i was trying to log in at like 804 and mm-hmm. it kept like dropping and I was like, what the fuck? So I was using Chrome. So then I tried to use Edge because I was like, maybe they suck. And it's like only compatible with Edge. And then it was saying my whole laptop was like not compatible. And it was like, that's a joke and not true. So then I just like <laughs> rage quit everything, got back in and then finally got in. And then I was in like the same as Anna, like a blank. You're just in a room where it says there's no match for you. And there's like a seven minute video you can watch if you want. I don't know. Did you get the video, Anna? did but i i i didn't get press play for like i think i tried to press play and it didn't work and i was like forget <laughs> it this is ridiculous <laughs> yeah so then we were just sitting there for eight minutes so i was like well i'm gonna go get a lamp like to ha- look better with like lighting because i'm an absolute lunatic so i went to get a lamp and then i came back and it was like the event's over it just like says like thanks and i was like i didn't do <laughs> no one did anything 
what time? Yeah, and then like a few minutes later, we got or I got an email at least, and it was like, oh, we didn't have enough participants, so the event's been um, postponed. Do you want to reschedule? And I'm like, what? And then I kind of fought back and like wrote him a message, and I was like, no, at this point, like I want to refund three cancellations and like last minute cancellations and then this event just like failed and he's like oh well, it was an IT glitch and it's not our fault and I'm like that's not really my problem at this point <laughs> and then yeah so we me and Sydney were getting different emails and different messages but basically it just like was a disaster and they've canceled it three times so haven't they had three times to test it and mm-hmm. make sure this works or like the technologies worked in other cities yeah yeah it sounds pretty um sounds like they don't have like their setup thought out before they did it no to me the funniest no, and also part we didn't get any instructions and people always need some basic instructions like i any, anything i've done for it like zoom anything i've done for education you got to give people like half an hour to log in and you got to give them a contact to help them out mm-hmm. yeah for me like one of the funny parts of it was when so after like the whole thing was over in like 30 seconds and I texted Chris and Cheryl and I was like, well, like this was ridiculous. And because mm-hmm. um, they said in the email they would give us a free event. So Cheryl was like, oh, so we get our money back. And I was like, well, we don't get our money back. We just get a free ab- event. And Chris was like, no, that means they're just promising not to charge you more money. Yes. It's not free. <laughs> and I was like, it's oh, my God. No, it's like your, your same thing. And then I looked into it because the event was booked through an app um, and it was set up with no refunds, so I can't do through the app. But I asked the company and they said they'd give me a refund, but I'll, I'll, I'll wait because they kept pushing back. Um, like, they're kind of pushy. They were like, if you get a refund, you can never come to one of our events in the future. And it's like, okay, great. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Good customer service. And what she's is- banned um, from all the partner companies. Yeah, and all the partner companies. That's the big threat. Yeah. All their big, bad partner things. And it was just, and he, like he said, he was like, oh, you threatened me. And I was like, we've had three events, plus this one didn't work. Like, I'm being pretty reasonable that I didn't ask for my money back, like, two cancellations ago. Well, we were also and, debating, like, did the one guy, like, because there was one dude in the room, like, with her and then all chicks. And he's like, did he just, like, like the first girl or not want to, or drop out? And I was like, there's no way that the only guy in a room with like eight chicks is just gonna like drop yeah. out yeah like it, even if it was an error or a glitch i think they could have emailed everyone was like we're gonna try again um or something right like some kind of solution not just like cancel the event and do it later like it just was so unprofessional so the interesting thing is that i messaged them today while we were starting the podcast just to be like hey can we get a refund i was like i don't feel so comfortable with this idea anymore can we just get a refund on the event and they gave it to me no problem no caveats no nothing like they're oh, just good. like yeah oh of course and like did, sorry did they process it like um they you got the money back or they just said yes they just said that they were going to process it as soon as they could okay sweet so hopefully you know yeah. what? i'll give it a week i'll give them a week to process it um like they must know people are frustrated yes. at this point yeah but you know what? We made our own fun, right? I think we had an adventure. We did. We this were just not going to take it. We, this is a great idea, and I would do it again. So can you... Do you s- want to pitch what it was? Yeah. So we went on a rampage after, and basically what happened is we were texting back and forth, and we are like, well, this sucks. Like, we're all dressed up. Like, so then I said that we should do, like, our own, like, speed dating thing. So we were talking about, like, Zoom, and then we ended up doing Google Meets. And then I rampaged and messaged a bunch of people on Tinder and posted in a now-deleted post that you cannot find on Reddit. Um, And we tried to get people to, like, come hang out and join our chat. And, like, fuck you. We'll find our own dudes to talk to. Everyone thought I was a robot, so I did not catch anybody. Um, and, And Anna got us one guy. Yeah. So I got, I got us two, but like one bear person yeah. doesn't count as much. So I posted, we did it. We posted everywhere. We posted to our girls chat and we're like, forget it. Just get drunk with us. We're doing some mayhem. And they're like, what does that mean? <laughs> our friend, one of our friends joined us. So that was good at least to catch up and talk. And then uh, one person from like my meetup group, who's not bad in person, but he, it was like, it's kind of boring. And then one random guy from Bumble, um, but the key is, I think I found, you do not ask them on the first message. You build a little, so I think if we do this again, we need to start messaging them during the day and then, like, have a meetup plan for that night. 
or uh, a Google Hangs for that night. You got to build it out more because it turns out you can't yeah. just say hashtag I'm not a bot. Yeah, exactly. Because if it's the first message, actually, I woke up the next day and it was quite funny. Um, and I was unmatched from everyone I had sent that message to <laughs> who I know, that I hadn't had it back and forth with. So I was like, okay, so that's the lesson. You got to like talk to them, have some rapport and then be like, hey, I want to talk to you. Oh, man. I got a match yeah. from a couple people, too. Yeah, because they're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> it's real hard to, like, beg strangers. Like, I don't know how people meet yeah. people. <laughs> no one was up for it. Yeah. And then I felt bad because, like, the person we got from Meetup, like, I, he's an acquaintance, but he was being real boring, and I kind of wanted to boot him from the Google chat because I'm like, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Um, but I knew him, so I was like, I can't be that rude. So with random strangers, we figured out, you can be, if you're organizing the event, you can be the bouncer, you can kick people out. So we thought, like, well, that's fairly, that, that has potential. You invite a bunch of randos, and then if, like, they start getting weird, you just boot them out of the chat, no problem. And then she had her fake name, I had mine, where it's just initials, so they can't really tell who you are. So, but, yeah, we actually had a decent conversation and got to know that one guy. Um, but I'm so, like, I'm so afraid of, like, red flags. As soon as I see something where I'm like, huh, that's interesting, I kind of bail, because he had something about being a 12-step, like, I, of course, when we were on the rampage, we were not reading profiles well. We were just like, blah, 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 let's get, a, let's get some conversations going. Get them matches. And then the next day, because he was actually kind of well-spoken, and he was like a nice guy to talk to, and I thought, oh, interesting, I might follow up with this person. And then I like read his profile in detail, and he mentioned how he's like a 12-stepper guy, but he still parties as long as it doesn't get out of hand. And I was like, that, <laughs> that seems weird. Like, he, Either you're working the 12 steps or you're off, right? I don't know about managing it. That sounds a little scary to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want, you want to talk to someone who has their drinking figured out in their party. Yeah. Exactly. Like me. Like I am a highly yeah. functioning alcoholic. Boom. <laughs> settled. <laughs> Handle it. Do you think you guys would uh, actually try to do it again? Yeah, maybe just for fun. I don't know about it for actually getting to know anyone, but actually, yeah, actually, I think I would, but I don't like online dating. I find it really boring. Like, I created a profile, and I got bored of it in two days, so I was like, this isn't for me, but I do, I do like speeding it up. Like, I hate the back and forth. I actually think the virtual chats is way better. You get to know people so much better mm -hmm. and so much faster. It's a little awkward. You got to keep the conversation moving. Yeah, I think it's better than, like, I kind of feel like Tinder is, like, such a waste of time. Like, you just go, hey, hey, how's it going? Like, are you a fish holder? And you just have to go on this exhausting. <laughs> I yes. hate fish holders. That's, that's like, a, I got I a gotta little five-year list of questions. That's, like, my number one deal breaker. Like, no fish holders. Really? You don't like the Alberta boys? That's not your thing? No, gross. <laughs> I'm thinking of changing my Tinder profile to accents only. <laughs> did you guys get to read any of the questions that we had like put up for you to read to people no because yeah, we didn't get we to didn't talk to anyone say, you know what we didn't put in it we should have done in the google chat i forgot people get so distracted everybody's yeah. like obsessed with covid right now yeah. where i'm like i need covid free time but um no you're right that would have been fun and i liked your questions your naughty questions for if you didn't like the guy mm -hmm. like i know you did really good thoughtful questions that I've read where you had a bunch of questions if you like the guy to learn more and like deep questions uh, and then if you don't like them just naughty random weird ones and I actually like the random ones I thought they were fun <laughs> my joke right because you guys know like I like a big rugged guy mm -hmm. I'm like if there's a question you had about had anyone had ever like for the no list um had dressed like a viking at any point in their life and i was like no that's my yes question <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a yes a for me too i'm like if you could be an extra on the show vikings i'm into you <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i should yeah. mention that cheryl and i had written uh questions for both you and both sydney and anna they weren't actually all the same questions too no. so you guys got different sets of questions just because we thought oh, really what what should like because we, we kind of know you both, so we're like, we know what you'll already kind of ask, but... What do you mean kind of? We're related by blood. Yeah. What do you mean kind of? <laughs> yeah, like, I I was trying to think of, like, really, really weird questions, and I think I made Sydney's questions way weirder. And I feel bad because I didn't read them, because I felt like he said to wait until the thing to read them, yeah. so I didn't read them ahead of time. Well, we're going to have to get you recording an episode where you read through some of those. So I still have them. 
So okay. the only thing, Anna, is about we got to figure out if we're going to do another like rampage. It's it's tricky in Google Meets because sometimes the sound cuts out when too many people are talking. Oh, yeah, that's right. We did pretty good with four people, though. Like, I think four so. Four people's not bad. Yeah, we had five at one point. But we yeah. did talk about COVID a lot. I know. We have to have a band. We're going to have to have some rules. Um, I just, I hate online dating. I get so bored by it and then frequently mm-hmm. triggered. I don't know what it is about it. Maybe because I did a lot of it a year or two ago. Um, I know it's just a tool and I know it's just like a method for meeting lots of people, but I just have a really hard time with it. And I don't know what that block is. I do too. Like the thought of like messaging someone that you don't know for a couple weeks to me is like literally exhausting. Especially if you see someone cute and then they don't respond. It's like, fuck you. I took 30 seconds to type out, hey, and you just ignore me <laughs> and unmatch me. Probably a fish yeah, holder. I, I think that's why I um, stopped with Bumble. Like, I just did it because I knew people would respond to us quickly. Bumble's a hard one because you always have to message first as the girl. And then to get ignored, you're like, dude, that sucks. <sighs> why is messaging first on Tinder? I got ignored by everyone. <laughs> would... At least, at least for Sydney, would you be interested in if Chris and I went through your Tinder and found random guys to video chat with? Anna has to be there. I need a friend. Okay. <laughs> I need I'll a friend. I'll be there. I'll be there as your emotional support. Yeah. I'll be the bouncer who can kick them out. Um, yeah. I can be the chaperone. Yeah. <laughs> I was really <laughs> dreading the event all day. I got so worked up. Also, I said I should mention. So every day leading up to all of the cancellations, Chris and Cheryl had to put up with me having an absolute <laughs> meltdown of me not wanting to use my fake name and going back and forth like a million times because I was like, what if I can't like keep it straight in my head or I don't respond to it? And then, um, yeah, I did end up doing it with a fake name and I didn't even get to talk to anyone, which was rude. <laughs> I would maybe uh, consider that, but I don't know. Like we, me and Anna are on, on opposite ends here where she really put in the effort and she's been on all these first dates. I've been back in Canada for, what, almost two years and I have gone on exactly one first date. And I was like, this is trash. I'd rather get mm. just drunk by myself and watch like a <laughs> hundred episodes of the 100 <laughs> and like not yeah. answer my phone. I go back and forth. I think it depends on how like psychologically healthy I am. Like mm-hmm. when I'm in a good mood, I can talk to anyone for an hour. Um, but if I'm feeling sensitive, like a first date that goes bad, like you kind of take it personally and then you're like, I'm never going to find anyone. Yeah. But like, it really depends on your mindset. Like, um, COVID right now is kind of like throwing me for a loop, but I really believe in the dating for fun and just like getting to know lots of people, being very open-minded and getting to know lots of people and then just be stricter. Like don't every, like there's kind of a cutoff, right? Like there's tons of people you'd never go on a second date with, um, or third or fourth and like try to exit, like be, I think like make up your mind by a month or so in if you like them or not. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's good to, um, string anyone along. And if people, if you can tell someone's really ahead of you, like they're really excited and you're like, I'm not, (laughs) um, to kind of thing, um, drop it off. I really do believe people should be open-minded about dating and make it an adventure and fun. That's why I have a hard time with online because it's just not that fun, you know, and it's a time investment. Mm -hmm. And then it gets that weird addictive validation thing. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like this, and the rejection, and it's so superficial. Like, um, I'm definitely getting more comfortable in my own skin, but I, like on my worst days, I'm like, okay, I'm kind of cute. And on my best days, I'm like, yeah, I'm objectively pretty attractive. But, you know, online dating is hard because like all they see is your pictures. And that's just like, I don't know about you guys, but like if a person fills the personality, right? Like their presence and stuff is so much more important. Yeah. You can see like how they react to questions or mm-hmm. think about how they're answering. Yeah, well, I find, like, I've seen kind of the really, like, shittier side of it because I'm, like, a plus-size person, and I believe just in online dating, just getting that out of the way because I want to look good in my pictures, so I take high-angle trickery pictures that, like, trick everyone. (laughs) So my profile, literally the first thing it says is plus-size, and then it's just out there. you got to have someone who's into you. Yeah, but I get messages like, okay, but how plus-size are you? Like, people trying to scope out, like, maybe what is over their Uh, weight threshold, which is, like, fuck you. Yeah. I I do think everyone should have flattering pictures, but I think it is important to have a few body shots. Um, 
like you are who you are, right? I think it is, I think it's present who you are in a good light, like wear something flattering. But I think it is good to have full body shots, like accurate recent ones. Well, I do have a body shot and I have two half body shots, but like my weight fluctuates a lot. So it's kind of like, here's like the rainbow of sizes that I am. Because it yeah, changes. That happens. And then um, yeah. I have a no makeup picture. Um, so I think I do okay. I'm not like lying to people, but I also feel yeah. like at a certain point, if you just say you're plus size, that like don't fucking message me then if yeah. you need to know. Yeah, yeah. You can get a yeah. sense. I feel from my pictures. Because I've never done that to a guy. Like I've never asked them if their pictures. Maybe if they're really fuzzy. I don't think I've ever made a guy qualify it. Mm-hmm. Right. Like yeah, I've never asked a guy how tall he is. <laughs> and yeah. I really want to because I've only dated people my height and they were all fucking monsters. So the, sh- Short guys can be insecure. There's a whole complex. Napoleon complex. Yeah. yeah. We should probably yeah. cut this part or we're all going to get canceled for hating on short guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, whoever, whatever a person has, I would say insecure people can be dangerous. Yes. And they're mm-hmm. difficult. Yeah. Um, like, I would say... In my mess, my, you know how you have to like have self-reflection. I've been insecure in my life. So I've bonded with insecure people, right? And it maybe contributed to my own toxic stuff and um, my own bad behavior. Um, but tox, like, so when you bond with someone who is also insecure, it comes out in really bad ways in it relationships, does. right? Yeah. Like, yeah, some short people are fine, right? Because they make a joke of it and they don't care. I think it all depends if someone is quite sensitive or not. Um because some people are insecure about their careers or their money or you know their mu- how muscular they are like all, all the things guys worry about right that's fair i did date one short person that was like my hype and he was not actually a monster and he had an <laughs> accent so bonus yeah i think just what, what, it's hard to know if someone's insecure or not you can't just ask them are you insecure about anything i'm going to yeah, may as well. And what are your deepest yeah, insecurities? Just put them all. I actually did this to somebody once. Okay, I was not in a good mood, or I was not in a good place. I just broken up with someone, and I think I was kind of sensitive. And I remember being on a date, and I asked, like, "What's the worst thing about you?" Which is such an like, <laughs> aggressive question. It is like a Freudian slip. I think it was just like on my mind, where it was like, yeah, like I was a little bit fear based, but yeah, I was like. Are you a monster? Was my question. I'm going to ask that all the time now. What's the worst thing about you? Yeah. Or are you a monster? Yeah. Just you cut a monster? to the chase. Are you a fish holder? Are you a monster? Is your name Kyle? Is your name Kyle? <laughs> have I previously said I hate Kyle? Yeah, you sure have. Oh, well, it's out there, Kyle. Sorry about it, <laughs> but not. You know who you are, Kyle. He does, too. I hope he never hears this. <laughs> <laughs> such an adventure so we'll see what happens um yeah you know what you message a bunch of people and we could be the chaperones or keep you company while you're waiting for people to pop in the message i think it would be fun to have you guys like all at a table with fake glasses or real glasses if you have them and just take <laughs> notes every time the dude says something make him real uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> oh like on the google thing yeah like panel with, yeah like, score answers and stuff a panel a lot. and then you can give them all a score after we'll get some lab coats <laughs> yes <laughs> oh no this is why That's i'm great. single <laughs> i think the important thing though is that we didn't just let ourselves get disappointed by this shady company that like does not help you find love at all yeah. and we took back our own mm-hmm. night yeah i think it was good that we had our own fun at least we had did something because they've canceled on us so many times mm-hmm. like it was getting frustrating to save time to do it mm-hmm. and they're, they're so dismissive like every single time like oh it's not a big deal we just canceled it and it's like people save time for us yeah, yeah. I'm trying to find a rich husband out here <laughs> god uh, i don't want to work anymore <laughs> That's what the podcast is for. That's true. <laughs> you get rich. Yeah. See? Through any means possible. Yes. Yeah, is that, you know what, it was like, it's as long as we get our money back too, after yes. that company wasting all yeah. that time, I, it was a relatively fun adventure. Oh yeah. yeah, but Sydney didn't tell you, the guy I spotted in the speed dating room that I didn't get to talk to, superficially, definitely my type. That's like extra layer of why like I was so annoyed, because I'm like, I actually want to talk to that guy. Oh no. <laughs> You're right? So it was like that extra layer where I'm like, fuck this. 
And it was weird to be like in a room by yourself. Like I, I feel like they should have just like left you in the queue if you didn't have a match. Yeah. Like nothing's more off-putting than being in a little chat room by yourself with a screen that says we have no match for you. Yeah, in normal yeah. speed dating, they let you talk to everybody. The, the organizer stole him for her own. Just kidding. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Probably. I wonder if the one guy in the chat was like her helper and he wasn't actually like a participant. Oh, maybe. Yeah. He did look a little bored. Yeah. And you would think if you were the only guy and six girls, you'd be checking out the screen more. Yeah. Suspicious. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's harder to get guys to go to the thing than ladies. Yes, for sure. Yeah, I guess it depends on the group. Yeah, speed dating seems to appeal to professionals a lot. Um, I'm trying to think like the different personality, but I remember reading something on it. Speed dating, the chances of getting a match are only like one percent. Yes. So oh, to interesting. To, like, it's probably people that are like want to be really efficient. Yes, they you, would think exactly. I'm a fucking you want to be efficient. They in bigger cities they have them themed, like they have them themed based on professions, and. Um, goals and ages more and stuff and like interests so you could see how like if you had a wine tasting um speed date event you might meet people more like you but i guess edmonton's too small for all that and now i've got myself banned from every future one i guess yeah now anna will never find love i mean (laughs) it would it would be like a worse fate if they could actually run one of them (laughs) exactly that would have been a sassy response like well if you ever start running events okay guys well i'll I'll log off you um but it was nice to catch up yeah it was good and uh, and thanks for joining us as our first ever official guest yeah thank you yeah thank you and then let me know um if you do want a chaperone for more shenanigans sometime i I would like that yes okay yes okay that's good all right bye guys have a good night so that is our recap of the almost speed dating event. Um, before we sign off here, I have a question for you. Oh, no. Mike DeMort, Kevin DeMort, Mark DeMort, Richard DeMort, or Bruce DeMort? The fuck is a DeMort? A person? <laughs> Last episode, you said you had an ex that you combined his name with Voldemort. All wrong. All wrong? All wrong. Okay. Uh... I'll come up with some new guesses next time. Oh, this is a fun segment. It's going to take <laughs> me a while. Is it like a He's not like name? a proper ex, but he's like just someone that traumatized me for a long time. Is it a common name? Ish. How many syllables? Nope, that's going to make it too easy. It's a common name of someone that's like a dickhead. Like if you heard the name, you'd be like, ugh, that guy probably uh... fucking sucks. Gross. Well... Okay, I've got some guesses now, but I'll save them for next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Should I publicly be trashing people I don't like? I mean, <gasps> well, he, if it's a common name, he, he may think that you've dated other people with that name. Yeah. Like if it was no, because like... I've only ever dated one person. Properly, I've only dated one person. So everyone that I've actually named on the podcast was not actually an ex. They were just someone that was the worst person in the whole world, and I hope they get eaten by slugs. Mm. Okay. I only have one proper ex. He a little bit had me deported from a country, but he's fine. It's, we chat every now and then. It sounds like you're making peace with him. Mm-hmm. Ish. <laughs> We're in touch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that about wraps up this episode of I Went Outside today. Next episode, hopefully, maybe, we'll be gold hunting and we'll be able to recap what we've done for that. Mm-hmm. That is now my new full-time job. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, your host, Chris, signing off. Cheryl signing off. And I'm Sydney. I do the things.